The October 25th, 2022 meeting of the Public Safety Committee will now come to order. Will the clerk please read the call? Roll call. Mr. Burgess. Here. Mr. Burgess is present. Mr. Colby. Here. Mr. Colby is present. Mr. Delahaney. Here. Mr. Delahaney is present. Mr. Delvecchio Hoffman. Mr. Delvecchio Hoffman is present. Chairman Dondorfer is excused. Ms. Hugh Smith. Here. Ms. Hugh Smith is present. Mr. Milne. Here. Mr. Milne is present. Ms. Vecchio. Here. Ms. Vecchio is present. President Lamar. Here. President Lamar is present. And is there anyone signed up for the public forum? There is not. Is there anyone present who is not signed up to speak who would like to address the committee at this time? Seeing none. The next item on the agenda is the approval of minutes. You have the September 28, 2022 minutes before you. They will stand approved unless the clerk is notified of any changes by the end of the day. New business. The next item on the agenda is new business. Mr. Clerk. Referral number 22-0346, acceptance of a grant from the New York State Division of Criminal Justice Services for the County Reentry Task Force Program and authorize a contract with Delphi Drug and Alcohol Council. Moved, Mr. Chairman. Second. Moved by Legislator Colby, seconded by Legislator Delahanty. Is there any comments or questions? Legislator Hugh Smith. Just a thank you to staff for pursuing this grant. Uh, Thank you. Mr. Holby? Yeah. Chairman to the administration, this grant is 17 years in ongoing. It, has it always been the same um, contractor or has the contractor changed over the years? <clears throat> Through the chair, sorry. Through the chair. I can get the information about who the past recipients were, but we do go through the RFP process every year for this. Uh, through through yep. the chair, through the chair, were they the the people you use? We used last year through the to the administration. Through the chair, yes, Delphi was the organization we used last year, and I believe that Catholic Family Charities was also a recipient in the past. Thank you. Are there any other questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. And opposed, the same. Carried. Referral 22-0347, acceptance of a grant from the New York State Division of Criminal Justice Services for the Raise the Age of Legislation. Move it, Mr. Chairman. Second, Mr. Chairman. Moved by Legislator Delahanty, seconded by Legislator Colby. Are there any comments or questions? Uh, Legislator Delahanty. Uh, through the chair, are there any statistics about the success of this program? Through the chair, there are a number of initiatives associated with this program due to the timing of when the state gives us our letter of accepted or letter of uh, acceptance. We have not been able to implement some of the staff, some of the programming changes. So at this point, we have probably data for the electronic monitoring program that we can get to you. Okay. And through the chair, can you please provide some clarity in the funding of this project? The end of the referral states that partial funding for this grant is included in the 2020 operating budget of public safety but then states that the grant is 100% funded by the New York State Division of Criminal Justice Services. Mr. Chairman, the <clears throat> annual grant award is just over $2.3 million and we're amending the budget, uh, not quite $1.8 million. The partial funding paragraph on page two is in reference to the fact that our 22 operating budget already contemplated some portion of this grant, and we are amending the budget now uh, to bring the total appropriations in line with the overall grant amount. It is 100% funded by New York State. We just need to align our appropriations to the grant award. Okay. And uh, through the chair, um, how much was actually spent during the grant period? Uh, is the full grant amount, is it the full grant amount or is it different through the chair? Through the chair, 
I believe the staffing portion of the grant amount that is on your referral is 100% utilized. The programming portion has not been. I yield the floor, Mr. Chairman. Are there any other questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. And opposed, the same? Carried. Referral number 22-0348, authorize a contract to stop abuse campaign for phase one of a multi-year project to reduce recidivism in the Monroe County Jail. Moved, Mr. Chairman. Second. Moved by Legislator Colby, seconded by Legislator Delahanty. Are there any questions or concerns? Mr. Colby. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, is, this, is the stop abuse campaign Incorporated, is that a local company? I don't have the exact wording in front of me through you, Mr. Chairman. I see that they're using uh, Columbia University. Is that where Stop Abuse Campaign Inc. is located? Uh, uh, Kim Hinckley, legal counsel for the sheriff, uh, through the chair. The uh, Stop Abuse is is uh, headquarters in, in New York City. There is a local chapter, or, um, they, sorry, the director does reside in Monroe County. Oh, thank you. Um, is um, Was Stop uh, Abuse Campaign Incorporated the only response to the RFP? Uh, through the chair, yes it was. Thank you, I'll yield the floor, Chairman. Are there any other questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. And opposed, the same? Carried. <clears throat> Referral 22-0349, amend resolution 270 of 2019 as amended by resolution 31 of 2020, resolution 72 of 2021, and resolution 409 of 2021 to authorize a contract amendment with Securus Technologies to reinstate its obligation to provide a full-time on-site system administrator. Move it, Mr. Chairman. Aye. We're moved by Legislator Delahanty, seconded by Legislator Colby. Are there any other questions? Are there questions or comments? Legislator Delahanty. Yeah, through the chair. Uh, why was the full-time on-site administrator uh, previously removed from the contract? Through the chair. The technician uh, that had previously been working for Secures uh, had moved on and they had difficulties trying to get a, uh, a qualified technician in uh, as, as part of the problems. Uh, they went without a technician for such a long time that some of the uh, jail staff were able to take over aspects of that. So it came to an agreement that they would uh, cut back uh, or cut us a $70,000 a year uh, for the uh, elimination of that, that uh, technician. And because because of the shortage in the jail, it's uh, every everybody's needed basically. So we need to get that technician back, that uh, jailer who's been doing those services back onto the uh, floors. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Are there any legislator vecchio? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just wanted. Absolutely noted. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Seeing none. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. And opposed, the same. Carried. Referral number 22 0350. Amend the 2022 to 2027 capital improvement program and the 2022 capital budget to add a project entitled Sheriff's Body Worn Camera and Less Lethal Weapon Project and authorize financing for the project. Move, Mr. Chairman. Second. Got it. I was going to let someone else. Um, moved by Legislator Colby, seconded by Legislator Delahanty. Legislator Vecchio, same. Noted. Thank you. Are there any questions or comments on this item? Legislator Hugh Smith. through the chair, Chief Deputy Fowler for the Sheriff's Office. You're correct, it includes tasers, but tasers is a brand name, so our generic term would be less than lethal devices. Through 
through the chair, uh, we are only seeking to use these funds for taser purchases. Any other questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. And, oppo and oppose the same. Carried. Referral number 22-0351, authorize the transfer of the contingency appropriation to the Office of the Sheriff for additional criminal investigation over time. Mr. Chairman. Second. Moved by Legislator Delahanty, seconded by Legislator Colby. Uh, and... Legis legislator, <laughs> uh, we have a second, another second. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> legislator Burgess, Legislator Vecchio. Okay, you have the floor. Um, I just wanted to re what our current staffing situation on road patrol is. Through the chair again, Chief Deputy Fowler for the Sheriff's Office. The road patrol for the Sheriff's Office is currently 22 persons short. However, uh, we've just worked with the uh, county executive to put in an academy class of 32 candidates. They started the academy this Monday. We expect them to graduate in August. How are we correcting those? Through the chair, uh, that is a constant management task. Uh, we are on a daily basis evaluating where to put our personnel. We will not, though, uh, go below our minimum uh, desired staffing for the zones. And what that means is that some of our uh, more optional types of tasks. Some of our discretionary tasks are getting delayed. They're getting reassigned. Uh, but as the referral states, the majority of this is being accomplished through the use of overtime funds. Uh, through the chair to the administration, what does an overtime detail look like? How many deputies are assigned or supervisors? And is there something in writing that dictates these numbers? <coughs> Through the chair, no. Every overtime detail is different. Uh, it is based off the set of circumstances at that time, whatever type of issue they're trying to address. I can give you a generic plan for what we're doing now. Uh, we consistently are putting 12 deputies and three supervisors in the city on a daily basis. Sometimes we cannot achieve that staffing because we have to pull them back and we'll have to put them in their zone assignments. We don't have enough people available. There won't be enough uh, deputies willing to work the overtime. So we will decrease the amount of deputies that work in the city. Uh, through the chair to the administration, what is the overall average number of hours of overtime on this particular Through the chair, I don't have a exact or approximate numbers a week, but I can tell you uh, we could quickly figure it out here. Uh, 12 deputies, three supervisors, seven days a week, and uh, they are each working four-hour shifts. I see. Yep. Thank you. Um, just one more, one more quick thing. Um, this honestly leads me to concern about the wellness of these deputies. Capping the number of hours they're working. Through the chair, I can assure you that we share your concern. Uh, it's something that I look at every day. Uh, we are not capping the amount of overtime we have in the past. Unfortunately, at this point, we're not able to. 
the demand for services uh, will not allow us to cap the overtime. But we are dealing with it on an individual basis. Supervisors are watching very closely how many hours people are putting in, what their individual circumstances are, uh, even to the point of looking at their family circumstances. You know, a, uh, a single deputy might be more inclined to work overtime as opposed to a deputy with a spouse and children and things like that. But uh, it is something we're watching very closely. It's also another reason why we worked with the county on uh, the officer wellness initiative that was just rolled out last month. And we hope to make uh, a lot of headway with that. But this is certainly not a long-term solution. Uh, we are looking at it as a short-term solution and we have to monitor it very closely. Thank you. Legislator Colby. Thank you. Um, through you, Mr. Chairman, um, these overtime shifts, the 12 and 3, are they only coming out of the road patrol division or are they coming out of other divisions too? Through you, Mr. Chairman. Through the chair, only the road patrol are certified police officers, so they are the only ones eligible to work these law enforcement details. Through you, Mr. Chairman. You said you were short 22 in the road patrol. How many officers or vacancies do you have in total in other divisions? Through you, Mr. Chairman. Through the chair, I will have to provide those numbers to you. Uh, I can tell you that the 22 from the road patrol that I'm responsible for and uh, numerous in the jail bureau, but I don't have the actual number in front of me. Through you, I, I, would appreciate if you could send us one for every division or account for every division, please, through the chairman. Through the chair, uh, absolutely, I can send that. I also want to clarify the the 22 vacancies that we have in the police bureau. Uh, those also account for the new 11 positions that were uh, approved by this honorable body. Thank you for that clarification. Uh, through you, Mr. Chairman, how much, we, we have vacancies throughout the whole jail. How much money um, have we have saved or not saved, but have not spent because we're short officers? Through you, Mr. Chairman. How much salary has not been spent that was prior uh, allot allotted? Through the chair, I'm being reminded that uh, those salary expenses are still being consumed. Uh, it's just through a different line, which would be overtime. Uh, if if you're looking for a, a deeper breakdown, okay. the, probably the end of the budget year would be the best to do that, but we could certainly try our best okay. to get you what you're looking for. I guess another way for me to ask the question, Mr. Chairman, through the chair, um, have we spent all the money that has not been spent on the unfilled positions, have that, all that money been spent on overtime to, to date? Uh, through conversation through the chair, uh, with conversation with the budget director, uh, we are uh, we're projecting to be very close to breaking even. However, we still have uh, two and a half months to go in this in this calendar year, this budget year, and there are a lot of variables at play. I know our staff in the sheriff's office, our budget staff, spends uh, probably the last three weeks of the year trying to balance these numbers and realize. Uh, gains and losses and and account for all of that overtime and salary that's been spent. Through the chair, where, where I'm going is, is this $100,000 that's being asked to add, is this then is an additional, what you've already spent of all those budget items from the positions that were not filled? Is that a correct statement to the chairman? <laughs> 
through the chair, that's correct. This is what we're we're looking to need in addition to what we already have. And if things continue the way they are, if we still have to continue putting those 12 deputies and three supervisors in the city on a daily basis, we will well exhaust this these funds. One last question about this. Through the chair, have any money been moved from other divisions into the what you call the road patrol to cover overtime uh, costs to date? Through the chair, uh, that's a constant process for our budget director and the sheriff's office. Uh, they're doing that all the time. It's more of a it's more of a, a management uh, task, I guess. But uh, there are not. It, it's a little too early for us to predict how much and when and where to take it from because some of those lines have funds that are yet to be spent on other things. So until we get towards the end of the budget year, it will be very difficult. And through the chair, so the answer is yes, money has been moved. You just don't know how much at this time, which is an acceptable answer. Is that correct? Through the chair, yes, I would certainly agree that uh, A, I'm probably not the best person to answer that question, but uh, it is a constant process and uh, you know, working with Mr. Franklin and trying to project where we're gonna be and what lines may have remaining money, that's something our staff deals with on a daily basis. I'll yield the floor at this time. Legislator Burgess. To the administration, um, with all of the issues that we have going on in the city and RPD numbers being down as well, who else is helping out other than Monroe County Sheriff? Through the chair, I can tell you that this is a consolidated effort from all of those agencies that have jurisdiction within the city of Rochester, uh, being the Rochester Police Department, the Sheriff's Office, the New York State Police, the probation, uh, parole, all of those, all of those law enforcement entities are coming together and devoting resources towards this problem. Chair to the administration, looking ahead with budgets coming up and the fact that we're already short as it is, what are we anticipating for uh, retirement numbers? And are we doing anything to prepare for that? Or are we, have we done anything to prepare for that? Or are we gearing up to Through the chair, I can tell you that the forecast is not positive. Uh, our current labor contract takes us through the end of 2024. If the trend continues at that time uh, and past practice holds true, we could potentially see a vacancy of up to 40 personnel. Uh, we're doing everything we can to prevent that at this time, including working with the county to put extra seats in the academy and every opportunity that we get, uh, slowly trying to, to create a little bit of a buffer. There's also a, a large amount of unknown as far as how many of those retirees actually come to fruition by the end of that calendar year. But uh, we are certainly preparing for what could be the worst and trying to prevent that at all costs. Yeah, I yield the floor. Thank you, Legislator Burgess. Uh, Legislator Colby. Yes, yeah, through you, Mr. Chairman. In past years, and maybe you can tell me what year you started adding, past years, how many road patrol um, shifts have we performed on a regular basis into the city of Rochester? Through you, Mr. Chairman. Through the chair, I can clarify that uh, approximately every uh, business day of the year for the past several years, we put anywhere from 12 to 16 deputies in the city of Rochester on a daily basis. Since the violence has risen so greatly, we've added another 12 plus these three supervisors that we've been talking about regarding the overtime here. So what you're seeing is a surge of an additional 12 deputies and three supervisors. 
through the chair, that clears up. So we've always had a presence of 12 or 16, and now we're adding an extra 12 to try to handle the extra calls, calls that are being handled in the city. Thank you. Is that correct? Through the chair, it, that's correct. The additional 12 are uniform patrols. The original 12 to 16 are task force members that uh, uh, are in search of fugitives. They're dealing warrant suspects, things like that. Thank you. Legislator Vecchio. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just one more question um, through you to the administration. Um, the retirements that we are preparing for I know we have an academy class going on right now. Is there a thought of putting through another class in the spring or? Through the chair, traditionally, we try to run two academy classes per calendar year. That's not always possible. Uh, it is a joint academy through MCC. Uh, but so long as those academy classes are available, and the seats are there, we will look to fill them to delay any of these staffing issues. Are there any other questions or comments? For the chair to the administration, is there any, um, once this is transferred to the MCSO, is there any funds remaining in the contingency appropriate? Through the chair, could I ask you to clarify that? Sure. Uh, through the chair, how much money is available currently in the contingency? Mr. Chairman, this is at $100,000. Um, so once this $100,000 has been transferred, and maybe I don't under, maybe this is a part of the budget that I need more clarification on, but once the $100,000 has been transferred to the MCSO, is there any remaining balance in the contingency? No, Mr. Chairman, the full appropriation is $100,000 and this referral would transfer to the office of the sheriff. Okay. Legislator Vecchio. Allocated funds. So, Chairman, um, two things. One, there is a specific budget line within finance unallocated called contingency fund. That is this one hundred thousand dollars. We we put that hundred thousand dollars in the budget every single year. Um, so this would completely transfer that particular budget appropriation. I will also second, Mr. Chairman, um, refresh the legislators' collective memory. Oh, I have to refresh my own memory. It was either one or two months ago, we put forth to this body a third quarter budget reappropriation uh, to realign salaries because of the recent 2% pay raise and $500 quarterly hiring and retention incentive also to realign budgets for the increasing cost of gasoline, diesel fuel, electricity. Um, so that third quarter reappropriation did include the sheriff's office, and we typically put forward a fourth quarter budget reappropriation, usually in December, um, that would give us another bite of the apple when it comes to um, transferring appropriations between departments uh, to cover any overtime needs within the sheriff's office. Thank you, Mr. Franklin. Is that answer? Are there any other questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. And opposed the same? Noted, thank you. Now, are there any other matters to come before this committee? Seeing none. There being no other matters, the October 25th, 2022 meeting of the Public Safety Committee stands adjourned. The next meeting of the Public Safety Committee will be held on Tuesday, November 29th, 2022 at 5.30 p.m.